week was that we went to London and because it's the first time that I've flown anywhere I think since I've been Ooh. vlogging I took the opportunity to film quite a lot of the plane <laughs> the very first water-powered elevator. Wow. Yeah, that... Amazing. The, um, the stained glass is really nice too. Oh, I love it. There was a hotel that was stayed in Cuba called the Hotel Raquel. <laughs> hotel Raquel. Hotel Raquel. It was in the St. Francis of Assisi Square or whatever. and. It was just like that, really up in the gigantic chandeliers that can kill you. I my life. Why do we call it vlogging? Because it's like video blogging. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm with you now. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm not a young kid anymore, so I don't <laughs> oh, understand all this either. terminology. <laughs> we like the play. hotel. Do you like it? Brilliant. It's nice, isn't it's it? It's a great hotel. Yeah. Is it true that this hotel had the first elevator in this country? Had the first water-powered elevator wow. in London. Amazing. That's a fact. Where is it now? Uh, well, the lift is in the corner here, the, where the shaft was. There's a plaque outside. Oh, yeah. This should tell you exactly. It's not water powered anymore. Useless. Since about 1974, I think. Right. And I was back to the old electrics. But it's still very nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. It still works. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the room was nice because it had a high ceiling, which I like. And what else? Big bed, really big, handy. Uh, <laughs> the next day, Jem from the Pose and Marcia Farkar, his wife, came and met us in the restaurant. <laughs> when you I know you mean. <laughs> I am it's it's called. Not, it's, 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 it's called a normal. She made that up. It's a face lift. Have you had a face lift? No. Not yet. Not yet. You don't know. No. And you don't have to have, you don't have, to have any <laughs> knives. Just a little. <laughs> Victoria, you might have had it. It's called a non-surgical face lift. Oh yeah. I've heard and it's about and it's, it's like little needles. It's electricity. It's like little needles that will stimulate your muscles. <laughs> He's loving this. It's sending him into a lovely sleep. The lullaby of the grove and a coma. <laughs> He's falling into a coma. He's I'm so bored of this. <laughs> no, he's not. You're not bored, Mitch, so are you? Yeah. No. So Brit came. That was great. Brit. My dear friend Brit, who actually got me started in journalism, believe it or not. When I was in my 20s, she said to me, have you ever heard of this band Nirvana? And I was like, nah. And she said, well, they're going to be big. <laughs> I think they're going to be really big. Would you like to co-write a biography with me about them? And I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, I hadn't even heard their music, but I was like, fuck it, yeah. And long, very long story, which I'm going to cut down to like one second. I found myself on tour with Nirvana, going around Europe with an Access All Areas Pass and hanging out in the dressing room and getting on the side of the stage every night and watching, you know, probably the best performer, like it is in my top three performers that I've ever seen, Kurt Cobain, RIP Kurt Cobain. Um, and me and Britt wrote the book and that's a very long story which I definitely won't go into here. But subsequent to that, Britt has now written a book about a cat. I don't seem to have a copy Actually, I do. Strays by Brit Collins. And I am not 
a cat person, as my sister Vanessa will tell you. I do like cats, but you know, not too, not too close up. But I, I cried three times at least when I read this book. It's such a moving, beautiful, and she's a beautiful writer, as well as being a real cat person. So if you are a cat person, I recommend you get that book. Great, her name's Cat. I mean, strange, 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 strange. That's pretty good coffee. Is any good? It's very good. Are you fussy about your coffee? I'm really fussy about my coffee. I like it extra strong, like heroin. Really? <laughs> heroin has the opposite effect of coffee? Oh, maybe. What do I know? Like cocaine or crack, you mean? Yeah, like crack. Crack coffee, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're in London and it's the sort of start of a mini hurricane season and there's and a desert, desert behind us. We're in the desert and a hurricane. How cool and, is that? And we're in Victoria. And, and is... 30 mile an hour gale force winds in Victoria. Or I love being in Victoria because I just feel <laughs> the it's like named after you, really. <laughs> Me and Shane went through London and we passed Westminster, which is where he went to school. And I reminded him of that and he was like not really that interested talking about it. Oh, this is a parliament. So Isn't it nice? Didn't you go to school here? No. I thought you did. Yes, you did. And the house is a No, just like at Westminster. Didn't you? Yeah. Was it nice? Yeah, it was a juicy piece of action. A juicy what? Piece of action. Westminster. Yeah. We got drugs from people on the night. We nicked. Nick records uh, to uh, to order to order. Enterprising, they call it. Yeah. <laughs> then when I got home, I had a media coaching session with my client Francis Valour, who's a really cool guy. Francis was born in India, in Kerala, and he became, he was a religious kid, and he got headhunted by the Jesuits and became a priest. And he spent like most of his life being a priest until I think nearly 10 years ago, he decided that it was just all rubbish and actually beyond rubbish, that it was the work of the devil. At the Catholic, Catholic. <laughs> and now he teaches a thing called awareness, which is like mindfulness, only better. The way he puts it, it's mindfulness with heart. So it's like heartfulness. So, so you got to have both. You can't just have mindfulness. Yeah, you mindfulness have alone is not enough. It's like uh, mindfulness is our uh, mindfulness is like looking. Mm. Awareness is seeing. That makes sense. So you need the will that involves that is involved in mindfulness and the willingness that comes from awareness. The activity that is involved in mindfulness and the receptivity that comes from awareness. So receptivity is the key. It's very important, isn't it? It is not I who meditate. If there is an I who meditates, then it is ego. Mm. But if meditation happens, then it is awareness. Okay. I'm interested in mindfulness. I mean, I'm interested in meditation, I'm interested in spirituality. So I always like to, to either work with people or meet people who've got a cool perspective on that. This week for the radio show, which is The Art of Living, I nearly forgot what it was called. It's The Art of Living radio show on Dublin City FM that I interviewed Fergus Cahillan. Hey, Fergus. <laughs> Fergus is my singing teacher. Yeah. And he's the guy that coached me for the electric picnic, which I've got to say, 
it's 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 very difficult for me this week because there hasn't been that level of excitement and I feel really bad because I haven't been practicing the singing because I don't really have a gig <laughs> so, uh, so it's hard you know I, I need to try and get back into that but anyway Fergus is really interesting and he's been a singer I guess he started singing when he was a baby he said I don't know if that's true um, but he's now in a band called Anuna they're a choral like choir not really, they're not really a band. They're well, anyway, they're like a, a choir, right? Yes. Oh. And they travel all over the world and they sing beautiful stuff. I've heard it. It's really beautiful. We're about to. Yeah. The reason we're here is because we're about to interview, well, I'm going to interview Fergus for the Art of Living radio show. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we're just going to chat about what we're going to talk about and possibly even get a bit of a demo of some of Fergus's amazing noises. My amazing noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People could interpret that the wrong way, but yeah. <laughs> so what's your jingle? Go on, make something up. No, you. What, what's the name of your show? The Art of Living. something that happened this week which is really really tragic and very sad and really difficult to deal with um, is that our good friend JP Donlevy died on Monday and I mean obviously it's always difficult to lose a loved one or a friend but but this guy was a huge like such a huge influence and so supportive and so like how can I put it? So instrumental in my success, such as it is. You know, even my book, um, Angel in Disguise, it was him, really, that encouraged me to get this book finished. Because I used to go down to his house and write down there, and he would give me really good advice about writing, but also about the whole publishing world and about staying motivated and getting it done. And when I finally gave him the manuscript, he wrote, this will, book will beat the bejesus out of the Bible. And, and because, I mean, the, after he said that about it, I didn't need it to sell any copies. I didn't need anyone else to say anything about it. It was like, right, my favorite writer has endorsed my book, you know? And he yeah. was just such a good, he was just really funny, but really accommodating, really kind, really welcoming, really witty. Yeah. Um, great company, just one of the best guys you could ever meet. And it was an honor to have met him. Um, so I spent a couple of days writing a piece about him, which was difficult because it's really hard when you're, you know, you're, you're so aware that, of the loss mm -hmm. to the world of somebody like that. So that was tough. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was really tough. Um, and, and so I did go and see Eckhart Tolle, mm -hmm. who is very famous for having written a book called The Power of Now. And that is basically about the space in between your thoughts, like the space in between us. But there are other things that thought can be a great interference to, to, to the essential realization of who you are and also to experiencing the joy of life and true inner peace and experiencing empathy towards other humans, experience love, true love, not egoic love. I want you, don't you ever leave me, not that. True love. All those things emanate not from conceptual thinking, they emanate from source, from the unconditioned consciousness. But when you go there, it seems from the point of view of the egoic mind and conceptual thinking that you don't know anything anymore. 
because the mind is still. Basically, he's saying that we don't die because we can't. And the only thing that dies is this. Physical. But we are not this. Right. We're so much more than that. We're, you know, eternal, immortal souls. Because you know that the sadness is just part of your humanness. And, of course, it's relevant to be sad, but at the same time, your humanness is only one part. It's like a tiny part. It's like they always say, you know, a wave is not the ocean. A wave is in the ocean. Mm. And, and an ocean, the ocean is kind of in the wave. Like, you know, but we, we identify ourselves as these waves, these, these personalities that pop up and exist for a while and then get reabsorbed. Yeah. So I guess we're all going to get reabsorbed and... Some of the really, really cool people that we've met have already been reabsorbed, like David Bowie and Lou Reed, you know, and Shane's mum. So hopefully we'll all get reabsorbed into the same place. I mean, that's that something to look nice. forward to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yeah.